Greetings, Queen Witch here with Queen of Forces Healing Ministries with a um, little chat, maybe a little reading for in honor of All Souls Day, All Saints Day, Hallows Eve, Halloween, El Dia de los Muertos, whatever, Samain, whatever you're celebrating. Um, it is a very, very special time. A very sacred time in my opinion and I'm so grateful I'm so grateful that I have allowed myself to learn to grow to change I know growing up I was raised in I guess you could say kind of a strict household I remember going trick-or-treating just a few times we didn't really do too much for Halloween. We went to fall festivals, things that were happening at the church, that kind of thing, which was fine. Um, and I remember at some point when I first became aware of and accepted and wanted to learn about spiritual practices outside of Christianity and not that I hadn't been exposed to things, of course, of course, but that was our family practice in our house. And I remember learning and growing and I was a part of a Rastafarian community and um, at the time I was, like I said, learning and listening, reading some other things too. But I remember being one of these people that went from, you know, when I was really into church, like, oh, everything else was terrible. And then when I got to something else, um, I kind of just, everything was terrible. Christmas was terrible. Halloween was terrible. Everything. Everything. And then I kept learning. I kept growing. And this is why I think I do my best to have patience with people who don't seem to want to understand and always have something negative to say. Not that I was trying to hurt people, but I just had the belief that everything outside of what we were being taught at church was wrong like that was hey that's just it you know it's this way or no way right and that's because of several things mainly because of interpretations the way we were taught about interpreting the scripture in the bible scriptures in the bible the way um leaders were teaching other leaders and then it dwindled down whatever but anyway, I'm so grateful that I decided to keep learning, to keep growing. Because when you learn and grow and you study, you will find out. Like the origins of a lot of things are really indigenous to you, maybe to your family. And then things are very different for you. So I'm very grateful for my growth over the years. And I'm so excited that I'm able to teach my children certain things. And I feel like no matter what we celebrate, everything is commercialized. It really is. And that kind of comes with the ter territory of once, you know, the way information is so easily accessible now. People know way more about other cultures than they used to know, at least in the U.S., it seems. And with that also comes with the commercialization. I mean, everything is commercialized. I won't get into that much more, except to say that it's up to us to decide how we honor certain times and cycles and days. Nobody can tell you how to honor anything. You know, I make a big deal about birthdays. I always have, but Again, over the years that I learned and grow, I'm like, hey, the world stopped. Well, that's what I say. The world stopped for a couple of seconds. 
to usher me through or to allow me to usher myself through. And that's important. That's important. The moment I decided to show up here was important and it should be celebrated and I should learn and grow and I should be appreciative of the time that I've had and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, let's get really to what I want to say because I'm already after five minutes. So, Uncle Jocelyn, life, prosperity, and good, good health to you. I am so excited. This is, October has become one of the best months of the year for me. And also for me, um, it's basically the end of the year for me. And it's interesting that, you know, we're at 10. October is the 10th month, supposedly. Scorpionic energy, death, transformation, you know, the veil is thin, as we say. Tomorrow's 11-1. And I'm just very excited because I always work with my ancestors, but this is a special time. So some things for us to be reminded of at this time, this is a beautiful time to want to connect with your loved ones. And because the veil is thin, it's also very important that we are practicing our spiritual hygiene and we are doing our protection stuff, stuff that we do all the time. We're wearing certain crystals, maybe some black tourmaline, you know, different black stones, hematite, um, shungite, tiger's eye, even quartz, whatever you have that you feel is the best for you to be using right now. Um, making sure, you know, you're taking your Florida water or rue water and just taking care of yourself, whatever, incense. I got some going right here. Incense grounding, seeing the light around, in, and through you, expanding your aura, affirming divine protection, prayers, uh, mantras. All of these things are very important at this time. And I did a reading on TikTok this morning that I think I shared on here as well. But it was about, you know, these, these energies that we're in right now. And a message came up that we practice our, remember our protection, hygiene, and especially for children. And, you know, a lot of people do not um, celebrate activities around this time of year. A lot of times people say, you know, it's devil stuff and they don't want their children to be hurt or whatever. And I will say this, because no matter what is going on, but because the as we say, the veil is thin, it's easy access, and there's a lot of activity going around. In case you are not aware, there's a lot of spiritual activity going around. And it is very important, because children are very vulnerable. You know, and this is why it's important for us as parents to make sure that we are training our children in our spiritual walk and at the same time allowing them freedom to grow and learn as well. You know, I know one thing that I desire to do is to teach my children as best I can, but also give them the freedom to learn and grow and help me learn some stuff because they do teach us a lot. So, Spiritual protection is, is, protection is very important. We know that this is a sacred time. I know it is for me. And so we also know that not everybody wants to use this energy and this time for good, for positivity. Okay? And that's all the time. But, you know, this is why we have to continue to learn and grow. Because as we used to say in church, and the devil is busy. So how about let's be busy. Let's be busy taking care of ourselves spiritually. Let's be busy taking this sacred time, honoring our ancestors, thanking them for their presence, for their protection, for their guidance, blessing our children, affirming things that we want to bring in. This scorpionic energy of death and transformation, letting go, working with our ancestors during this time to say, listen, thank you for being with me, 
for helping me this far. Help me to have the clarity to see more. Write down things that you need help with, that you want them to help you with. It could be anything, absolutely anything. But one of the most important things I think that we could be asking for help with right now is not only divine protection, but guiding us to take care of ourselves better spiritually and mentally, to be aware of what's going on around us and flow with the forces. You know, we need to be able to take care of ourselves so that we can prosper in all the other areas in our, in our life. Because as we know, everything is connected. So one of the things that I'm doing and I'm involving my children with this, of course, is because my altar's right over here. I'm in my office space, my workspace, my sanctuary, kind of. And um, I involve my children in my altar work a lot. They help feed the ancestors. They... They do everything that I do, pretty much. You know, I mean, they don't like candles or whatever, but they do help bring the candles. We do prayers together, so I involve them. Because, again, there's so much going on. And just like I know children are vulnerable, everybody else does too. People with good intentions and people with bad intentions. So this is why it's important for children to be armed now with spiritual knowledge, with energetic knowledge, to know how to take care of themselves, to be walking metaphysicians. And and we bring them up like this. It's becoming more and more normal. You know, I hear my children sometimes outside playing and they are talking about zodiac signs with each other. And I think it's just the cutest thing, you know. But anyway, I want to do a brief reading in a minute. But um, another thing, just reminding us working with our ancestors, um, make sure you're giving them things that they really want as best you can, because you got to work with what you have, right? But if you're able to give them what they want and you don't know what they want, really, this is the perfect time for you to sit down, talk with them, listen. Ask them to show you signs and ways that you would know. You may be able to give them something very specific, like, let me see a green car when I drive on Interstate 95 next time or whatever. But something specific that you know, that they know, and they'll show you. They want to communicate. So, you know... Even if you don't have pictures of all the ancestors that you would like to have on your altar, write the names down on a piece of paper. Call out the names you know. And I always say something like, you know, my benevolent and righteous ancestors or those who lived in an upright manner to the best of their ability, who have my highest and best good in mind. And just work with them and you can say to those whose name I know and to those whose name I do not know I thank you I thank you I thank you I thank you because what I am learning is I know a lot lately since my Nana died in on Christmas Eve last year since I've been working with her in my altar more relatives in her line I'm feeling their energy. I'm being reminded of their names. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, the more you connect. And like I've had an altar for 50 lamb years, you know. And it's just interesting because sometimes we're not paying attention as much as we think. So this is a good time to remind us to stay focused Check on your altar, refresh your altar, clean it if it needs to be clean. Give them the food that they want, especially, you know, we got Dia de los Muertos. Oh my goodness, you know, make them a good meal. Make them a good meal and give them something you know they're really going to like. You know, I know my Nana wants some of her biscuits. I'm like, Lord Nana, I never made your biscuits. 
how am I going to make your biscuits? I can't make your biscuits. Them your biscuits. <laughs> but I can make some biscuits for her. She wants them, clearly. So feed them, have the children, again, involved in it. It's just beautiful. Call out the names. Let them call out names. And the ones that are old enough to read, even better. If you got the names written down, then they can just read them out. It's beautiful. And again, it's such a sacred time. And it's wonderful for our children to have these experiences and to be able to learn and grow so much stronger because of that connection. So as I always ring my bell, this is the bell from my altar. And that's my signal to them. Hey, we're finna have some communion. You know, not that they're not always around, but when I'm doing my time, that's my signal. So we give thanks. So during this time too, I want to say, um, again, our so-called New Year's goals. Excuse me, y'all, I'm sleepy. I am so very sleepy. And I wanted to do this reading earlier today, but it's not even going as I had planned, but I'm going to let it ride out. And just be grateful. Just be very, very grateful. I know a lot of changes for me are coming up um, with my ministry, with my entire life. And it's very important for me to stay connected with my ancestors, asking them for guidance and listen to the message that they're giving me because I do know a lot of changes are coming up and I want to be as prepared for them as I can be. So that's going to help you. It's helping me. It's going to help you. They will help you. And I'm just very grateful because I know that through with the changes that are coming, I got a feeling there might not be all the changes aren't going to be that convenient, <laughs> but by now I know that I'm indestructible and I can get through it all. I have to flow, do what I know to do. That's it. That's what this is all about. Make sure you're honoring the elements or recognizing the elements when you're working on your altar, but connect with your ancestors and you know what too, y'all, I just got a new niece. So right before the sun was in Scorpio, sun was still in Libra and um, I'm just so very grateful because an ancestor has returned. She's far away from me. Can't wait to meet her in person, but she's been communicating with me a lot and I'm so very grateful for that. I'm so very grateful. So this ancestor energy, you know, is it, it works very well with the young babies because like I said, this the ancestor returned and I'm just so, I feel very, very fortunate to be able to be aware of the things that I'm aware of right now. And so I do lots of prayers and things for my family and I'm just very, very grateful. And I bless this child and welcome her into the world. That's my homie. We already homies. So I'll go into all the way at 20 minutes. Flip a couple of cards. See, I had some notes here. I think I said most of what I was going to say. All right, let's see what our message is. You do not have to be defensive. Let go of things not serving you. Good time, Scorpionic energy. Let it die. Let it transform, transmute it into something beautiful. Just let it go. If you have to do physical reminders, let it go. Let it go. Brush it away. Wash it away. Let it go. Let it go. Let go of trying to control things that seem uncontrollable. Because maybe it's 
you just have to rise some things out, flow with the forces. Um, but it's a lot about kind of to, like surrendering to your own divinity, surrendering to life. Again, flowing with the forces because you are divinely protected. Affirm your protection. You don't have to struggle and fight. You know, I consider myself a spiritual warrior, but I have learned over the years to not use my own energy so much, okay? Because that's not what it really is about. It's chess, not checkers, you know? You can't fight. That's why uh, we used to have a song in church. Um, if I highs go... If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory shall be mine. You know, we can see Lord is rule, law, universal law, my art. If you standing on your square and doing the best you can to walk in integrity. All you got to do is handle your stuff. Take care of your ancestors. Take care of my art. Take care of yourself. Declare your protection. Do what is yours to do. And that's it. Yeah, you can come. You can come out of hermit, hermit mode. But. My suggestion is don't like. Be a person who's who's been in the house for three weeks and then go out to the club for two weeks straight. It's not that, okay? Because hermit time is very important. And sometimes you just have to gradually come out of hermit mode so that you don't shock yourself. So if too much is happening too fast, take it back a notch. Because you could become overwhelmed with emotion, a lot of water energy, you know, Scorpio's water energy as well. So let go. Don't be overwhelmed. Affirm your divine protection. Anything coming at you harshly. Okay. Because coming out of hermit mode, if somebody coming at you sideways or even straight up, but they come in aggressive, hey. Mur, pipe it down, pipe it down. So be at peace. Know that prayers are being answered. That was one of the messages on um, the oracle reading I did earlier. Matter of fact, let's pull some from the Spellcasters Oracle deck. This has been one of my favorite oracle decks to work with lately. Mm -hmm. About to be 25 minutes up in here. Wow, on the same cards that came out earlier. I'm a, I didn't pick up the other cards, but protection. Protection. And look at that. This, she's protecting the earth here. You can look at it like that, all right? She also looks like the Empress card in the tarot. It's also, it might take me back to children as well, because Empress Energy is about motherhood, it's about nurturing, protecting. So do your part to protect the earth that you live on and walk on. Do your part to protect yourself, to protect children. Protection, protection rituals, same thing I was saying earlier. I was like, well, I can't, it was, I think this was the very first card this morning. I pulled that spread this morning. This was the first card. This is still the first card. I decree and declare divine protection upon you watching this video, your family, your loved ones, and anybody connected to you that treats you well and walk in integrity. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The 
presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Psalms 23, Psalms 91. Okay. And that reminds me too, I'm working a lot with this. I always do, but, um, you know, I got some preachers in my family and they love church music. They love the Psalms. They love the Bible, of course, and they know lots of stuff. So Psalms 23, Psalms 91, very well known for protection. Also, Psalms 4 and 5. You can read all of these however you want, but you could do 4 and 5 in the morning or 4 in Psalms 23 in the morning, 5 in Psalms 91 in the evening. You can do them all day, several times a day, certain times a day, whatever. But those are just my suggestions. Those are coming to me to tell you that. And I will be doing it myself. And trust, trust that you are safe and divinely protected. Can y'all see this? Good. Trust. Trust that all is well. Trust in your own divinity. Trust in your big mama and them that done crossed over. And send love and light to any recently deceased loved ones. My cousin had a, um, lost her son recently. So I've been um, sending love his way, I'll say, to, you know, we got on them and help them out when they need help. Coming and going. Also, around this time, too, many of us are aware of, I like to call them the invisibles, you know, that are a little confused, who may have let go of their bodies quickly and, and got stuck or whatever the case. So again, this is why it's very important to be taking care of yourself because sometimes when there's confusion, then they may do things that are not. And if you sense those energies, you know, you can let them know, hey, you might have taken a wrong turn. You might need to go that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and help them go on their way because if they're too stuck, you know. And this is, I guess I'm talking, you understand what I'm saying, but at the same time, everything in every place is happening at the same time. Well, you know, there's separation, but there's no separation. And, um... But they have to, or it's better, I would say, if they're able to let go and move through peacefully. So I truly believe that those of us who are sensitive to that energy can help them. I'm not, I'm not inclined to go running around when I walk outside. Hey, anybody out here need help? No. I wouldn't suggest that, but those of us who are inclined, you know, we will see them, you know, and be grateful, honor your ancestors, honor your spirit guides, those benevolent forces that walk with you, honor them, take care of yourself during this time, meditate, pray, allow things to fall away that no longer serve you. A lot of transformation. Pray for strength to deal with the transformation. And one of the things that came up this morning was, you know, affirming your willpower. Like I said about myself, I get aggravated sometimes still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Queen Reverend sure does. But one thing I do know, and like I was just saying, I, I'm indestructible, clearly. It ain't my time. I got stuff to do. So when you know that, them little punks that's got something to say or do, I mean, hey, they're there. But what? What? Okay. Had that attitude. 
one more for the bow. And look at this. Family. Family, family. This certainly reminds me of ancestor energy right here. And of course, your family that's in the physical, you take care of them too. But since we're talking about the ancestors, and just looking at the card though, I just... Lots of messages, lots of messages coming through. And thank you, Spirit. Thank you, because I just got a personal message about this. So he's all right. They got him. Give a shout out to my nephew in the spirit realm. I said, make sure you get your cousin on. Oh, gosh, I'm so very grateful. Yeah, thank you. They got them. May the force of healing be with you. May you have a blessed holy day. Holy days, I consider. October 31st, November 1st, and November 2nd. Some more holy days for me. I'm also, oh my gosh, I'm also celebrating my anniversary of ordination and initiation. The dates have passed. But I've decided since I didn't really do anything grand, and I probably won't do anything grand, but um, I have decided since I am surrendering to scorpionic energy myself, that's another story, um, that I'm going to continue honoring that. And I'm just going to have to talk about that more in another video because this video is much longer than I had anticipated. And that's seems to be happening to me all the time <laughs> but it is what it is use your crystals whatever you have to assist you on your spiritual journey take care of yourself uncle jasanel queen witchy signing off <laughs>